subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Donald Trump is back in the White House after contracting COVID-19. And though much drama unfolded over the weekend, we're yet to see how this will pan out with the US elections less than a month away. On this episode of Delhi to DC, we will be talking about a specific community in the US which is expected to play an integral role in the upcoming US elections. The Indian American community in the US may be small, just 4 million people, but its voting population is even smaller, a mere 1.8 million. However, it is expected to be among the most influential groups in the upcoming US elections, especially in swing states. For example, in the run-up to the 2016 presidential elections, Indian Americans alone raised over $10 million towards the Democratic ticket, which was Hillary Clinton's ticket. It's no wonder Democratic vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris made a shout out to her Tamilian chittis during the Democratic convention in August, while former ambassador Nikki Haley talked about overcoming racism in America as a daughter of Indian immigrants during the Republican convention. Even US President Donald Trump has used his bonhomie with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi after past events like Howdy Modi and Namaste Trump to come across as a friend to India. Though in the first presidential debate, he did say India, like China and Russia, doesn't give a straight count of their COVID-19 deaths and that these countries contribute to climate change by sending dirt up into the air. And by the way, when you talk about numbers, you don't know how many people died in China. You don't know how many people died in Russia. You don't know how many people died in India. They don't exactly give you a straight count, just so you understand. China sends up real dirt into the air. Russia does, India does, they all do. Indian Americans have traditionally voted for the Democratic Party, like in 2008 and 2012, where they were won over by Barack Obama. But in 2016, a sizable population of this community shifted to the Republican side. Some say this shift was because many Indian Americans hoped Trump would bring taxes down, but others say it was because the Democratic Party itself was changing. Just listen to why Vincent Palatingal, an Indian American from Virginia, said he's no longer a Democrat. I strongly believe the American capitalism, the individual liberties, the personal responsibility message that is completely lost on the Democrat side. I have supported Obama in the past, so I'm not really a uh, like born Republican or anything. I have identified that whatever I came here to embrace is in danger. I consider uh, candidate Biden as just a dummy for the Democrat socialists, you know, the far left-wing uh, politics. Um, I really, when I supported Democrats, they were a much better party than what it is now. So there is no way anybody with reasonable common sense and who came here running away from socialist economies should have any way they can support uh, candidate Biden. Now let's look at former Vice President Joe Biden for a second, who is this year's Democratic nominee. In the past, Biden has criticized the revocation of Article 370 in Jammu and Kashmir, the National Register of Citizens or NRC, and the Citizenship Amendment Act or CAA. But some Indian Americans aren't exactly happy with the policies carried out by the Trump administration. So right now, the issues that are most important to me is uh, clearly I want to see some change in how we deal with our immigration process because I just think uh, what the current administration is doing is not a very open and like fair way to handle immigration issues. I do feel that like immigration issues do need to be better handled. Trump might be a friend to India, but his strict immigration policies have actually disadvantaged Indians in the US. In June, for example, he suspended H-1B visa holders, three-fourths of whom are Indian, till the end of 2020. His administration has also proposed hiking the fee of H-1B visas by about 20%, but that proposal is still stuck in court. For The Print, this is Pia Krishnkuti. For more, visit The Print.in and follow us on social media.